Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture video for this subject, General Biology 1. And still, this is your mom, Jeremy, who will do the lecture for this session. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the different experiments conducted by different scientists to explain the theory of spontaneous generation. From the idea of cell theory, can living organisms arise from non-living ones? The cell theory had greatly disproved the theory of spontaneous generation, which shows that organisms can came from non-living sources. The theory of spontaneous generation was generally accepted until the 19th century. The cell theory's third postulate directly contradicts the theory of spontaneous generation. Aside from the experiments conducted by Virtue and Remak, prior studies were initially done to test the validity of the spontaneous generation. In 1668, Francesco Radai experimented on fresh meat in jars. As you can see in the picture, there are three jars. The first jar with fresh meat was left open, while the second jar with fresh meat was sealed airtight, and the last jar with fresh meat was covered with cloth. After leaving it for weeks, the open jar had maggots feeding on meat, while the second jar does not show any maggots at all, and the third jar had some maggots on the cloth cover. Thus, Radai concluded that maggots can only came from something alive, and he was one of the scientists to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation. In 1975, John Needham also made a test to check the validity of spontaneous generation. Remember everyone that during that time, people already believed that boiling could kill microorganisms. That's why in his experiment, as you can see in the picture, he boiled the chicken broth in a container and left it. Days later, microorganisms still grew on the surface of the chicken broth. He presented his result as a piece of evidence that supported the theory of spontaneous generation because he stated that there was no other source of life other than the chicken broth. From that, here comes now Lazarus Palanzani, wherein he was not convinced by the result of the experiment conducted by Needham. That's why, he prepared two setup for a more accurate results. In his first setup, as you can see in the picture, he sealed the flask and then boiled the chicken broth in it. After a few days of waiting, no microorganisms were observed in the flask. And then, to check the validity of his first setup, he subjected another flask with chicken broth with the same conditions, except that during the heating process, the flask was not sealed. Microorganisms grew in the flask. He saw these results as proof that the theory of spontaneous generation could not be true. Those who believe in the theory of spontaneous generation contested that air was prevented to enter the flask of Spallanzani, resulting in the absence of microorganisms. That's why, in 1859, Louis Pasteur also did some tests to check the truth behind the theory of spontaneous generation. In his experiment, as you can see in the picture, he put the myth brought in a S-shaped flask without a seal. Then, he boiled the broth to kill the existing microbes. Thus, particles only get through the bottom bend of the swan neck 
keeping still the broth is sterile, meaning no growth of microorganisms. And then, he broke the swan neck, making the broth cloudy, which is a sign that microorganisms had entered the broth. This finally proved that the theory of spontaneous generation was not true. Now, with the different experiments with different results, can living organisms arise from non-living matters?